Hello everyone, my name is Hu Yang, a PhD candidate at Guangdong University of Foreign Studies. At first, I'd like to thank Hazel giving me the opportunity to present my paper. My paper focuses on the study of verbal Nori in the Daily Show with Trevor Nori from the perspective of echoic interpretation theory. At first, my paper are presented into five parts. Introduction, literature view, theoretical framework, research design and data analysis, conclusions and limitations. First, let's come to the research background. Compared to the metaphor, a penetrating study on Nori is still in infancy, since none of the approach are convincing enough and can commute to criticism. And you know, during the spreading of coronavirus, a famous American talk show, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, received ardent fans around the world. Trevor contributes voluminous and notable remarks to criticize harshly on President Trump, the American government's bureaucracy, the poor health care, a lagging French unemployment support, etc., in the time of COVID-19. In general, my research question comes into two parts. Number one, how can we identify verbal and nori? That is, what is the definition of verbal and nori? Since verbal and nori is characterized by a choric, how can we confirm that a verbal and nori is implicit, interpretive a choric use, and simultaneously with a dissociative attitude? Number two, how do we interpret anoric utterances with the help of echoic interpretation theory? That is, how can we discern whether a specific anoric utterance is an immediate and direct echo, the echo of attributed thought, or echo of norms and standard expectations? So, this part deals with the literature review. There are theories relating to the study of anori. Number one, the traditional rhetoric and the semantic approach. Two, Glass cooperative principle. Three, third speech act theory. And last one, Leach's annoying principle. Okay, the traditional rhetoric approach interprets annoying as the figurative meaning, which opposes to the literal meaning. And this approach is also called the substitution semantic approach. Number two is the Glass pragmatic approach. In this approach, he defines annoying as an imprecture. That is due to the violation of the quality pretty uh, maxim. But this approach is not perfect too, since the violation of other maxims, such as quality, duration, manner, that can also trigger anori. So this approach is very fragile in the anori interpretation. Okay, the last two thirds and leeches approach, due to the time limitation, I will not elaborate on, on them. Here, I'd like to lay emphasis on the framework of my research, echoic interpretation theory. This theory is proposed by Sperber and Wilson. First, we regard anori as mentioned, or transmit as echo, and simultaneously express a specific attitude toward it. Later on, the notion of mention is substituted by the notion of interpretation. And then, they regard anori as implicit interpretive echoic use, in which the communicator dissociated himself or self from the opinion echoed with a complete ridicule scone. So here we got three properties of anori, implicit, interpretive, and dissociative. So the key notion is echo. What is the echo? We know that echo can be classified into three types, directly emitted echoes, the echoes of attributed source, the echoes of norms, and standard, standard expectations. Before we come to the key notion, let's first look at the research design. The present study takes a qualitative method to analyze a noise in a daily show with travel node. The analysis combines the natural data with a theory driven method. Specific methods include induction, classification, enumeration, and exemplification. The data in this paper are sampled from the video transcripted in the Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and you can consult in the following website. Okay, after consult the research design, let's come to the key part mentioned before. The first one, direct and immediate echoes. 
This echoes repeats the, repeats the preceding utterance. It is a case of mention. It used to express the disapproving, disapproving or rejecting attitude to the proposition echoed. The repeated part can be a word, a phrase, or a whole sentence. So it is the easiest to be identified. Since the two representations, the echoed source and the speaker utterance, are most the same in the literal sense. Here are some examples in the daily show. First one, a foreign virus, a virus. Here the virus is just a repetition of the preceding part. Uh, this example is used by Charles. He satirized Trump that not take the virus as a big deal. Trump only thinks this virus is foreign and we Americans can immune to it. So Trump ridicule Trump that is not a foreign virus, it's just virus. Okay, it's an it, it is an annoy. The second example, what problem shut the border, problem shut the border, close the borders. Here the phrase shut the border repeated three times. Okay, here Trump ridicule Trump. In face of the COVID-19, he took nothing, but his only go-to solution is shut the border. Okay, and last one, the repeated, repeated part is the border, the border. Here, the context is that the Trump, the Trump shut the border to the Europe, but he opened it to UK and Ireland. So here, travel said ridiculous. Ridicule, ridicule Trump's decision that maybe Trump thinks the coronavirus doesn't know how to swim. Uh huh. Such a ridiculous, right? The second type, echoes of attributed thoughts. It refers to a kind of pragmatic phenomenon in which the speaker considers that a certain thought is attributed to a hero or a certain person, so that he speaks his mind as an echo of attributed thoughts. Here again, we come some example. Okay, we are attributed so that Trump is always lying, but Trevor but Trevor says, either Trump is lying, which is unlikely, but in fact Trump is always lying, so it's such an oracle, right? And also, Trump always blame Obama for everything, for doing the tests. That means the coronavirus test. And also, here Trevor one here Trevor satirized Trump that Trump blame blame everything on Obama, even on Obama's American citizenship. Because we know that uh, Trump, Trump always questioned Obama's American citizenship and said Obama once had his birth certificate. Okay, and here Trump is satirized on Trump's remarks. The second example, the Trump satirized Trump took nothing for the preparation in face of COVID-19, maybe Trump has more pages to release than George Martin. That means Trump will never list any preparation. Okay. He's even more tired than George Martin. The last type is a course of norms or standard expectations. Analytical utterances can echo some general norms, universal design, or standard expectations. Look here again some examples in the Daily Show. Okay, we know that Trump is spend a lot of time playing golf. So he took lancing to he took lancing to the coronavirus. So the traveler says maybe Trump was searching for coronavirus in a sand trap. Ha, huh, very ridiculous, right? And and then and next Trump is always take his instincts to make decisions, such as reopen the economy. So Trevor satirized him that he also looked directly into the sun during the eclipse. According to our standard expectations, we can't just use our instinct to look sun during eclipse. Okay, we use technology, we use science, but but never instincts. So here's a totally totally ridicule. And third, we know that according to our norms. When we put a pack of fireworks into a bag of cocaine, that will be very dangerous. That will be a big explosion. But now Trevor ridiculed Trump. Ridiculed Trump's presidential address turned out to be as calming as a pack of fireworks dropped in, drop, drop into a bag of cocaine. And the last one, we know that Donald Trump, according to our 
lower standard expectations. Donald Trump is American president. But now Trevor said right that Donald Trump is a freak out by coronavirus as a regular citizen, or which is why because he is the president. So here Trump here Trump said right here Trevor said to Trump that Trump didn't took the big coronavirus as a big deal, and he think American people can immune to this virus. So here is a totally annoying. Okay, let's come to the conclusion part. The equation interpretation theory is black school in the annoying study. Since it shifted the study from the pragmatic purpose to communicative purpose, and shifted the concern how the annoying is produced to how the annoying is interpreted, my analysis has shown that a quick interpretation theory plays an essential but invisible role throughout the process. Of course, there are many limitations in my research. First of all, the amount of my research data is relatively small. I confirm my research data to um, one of the American talk show, The Daily Show with Trevor Now, and many in the last year, April 2020. And second, I only take the transcript into consideration and have ignored the paralinguistic features and long verbal behavior of the speaker. Third, the study of Anori is an interdisciplinary science, but I have not approached it from the Pacman cognitive perspective, leaving sociological and psychological aspects untouched. And last one, this study is confined to English, you know. For the findings to be more appealing across linguistic studies, something to be desired. Okay, that's all. That is all for my research. Thank you for your listening.